before we get rolling with this week's episode, a couple quick announcements. Uh, first of all, I'm very, very happy to say that my 2016 hardcover portfolio book has completely sold through the edition of 100 books. And that makes me feel so incredibly good because that's one of the major things that I do depend on to, uh, to be able to do this. But also, I think it's just awesome to be able to see the photos in the book form. So I just wanna thank everyone who helped me out with that and uh, who ordered a copy of the book. Uh, the 2017 book will be coming out probably sometime in December. Um, so I'm actually gonna start working on that right now just to uh, make sure, cause I gotta find a new publisher for it. So I gotta find a new way of doing that. But thank you guys so much for that. I definitely do appreciate it. And also thank you so much for the PayPal support. That is what also makes this all possible. This week's video is gonna be kind of fun. Uh, it's inspired by last week's video, so I'm gonna be sharing some photos, telling some stories behind them. Hope you guys enjoy. What is going on, everyone? So in this week's video, I want to sort of build upon something I started last week. Last week, I showed a couple of photos I had sort of saved from my reject pile, and kind of came full circle and decided that I actually kind of liked the pictures. Um, but I really enjoyed the process of talking about those photos, talking about the composition, the thought that went into it, the decision-making process. And I realized that there's probably many of you who might be watching this video who have not seen some of my older video journals dating back to you know, 2012, 2013 and all that. So I figured what I'd do is I'd select three photos that all have a similar theme as sort of talk about those photos and some of the other sort of discussions that kind of come up along the way. So the theme of the three photos I'm gonna show this week is photos that tell a story. And I'll start by showing a photo I shot back in, I think 2014 or 2015, I kind of lose track, but it was in Zion National Park. And I spent a lot of time that year just wandering through the washes on the east side of the park, just trying to find some subjects that stood out to me for one reason or another. And what I wasn't looking for is I wasn't looking for that perfect idealized sort of subject. I was actually looking for something that has more character and I was actively looking for something that does tell a story. And that's why I was really happy when I stumbled, across, stumbled upon this scene that has these two pine trees that are growing in this wash. And they're right up at the edge of the wash set up against this really nice background of sandstone all bathed in reflected light. And what caught my eye was the fact that there are these two trees that are kind of intertwined and they're sort of almost embracing each other. And I think it's really easy when looking at a scene like this to sort of think of the trees almost as people, almost as though it's a mother and a father sort of embracing in this sort of situation where they have the adversity of living in a really tough area. And way up in the upper left corner, there is this much smaller little pine tree growing up there, which is kind of easy to think of as sort of the child. Um, so with a scene like this, you know, if I hadn't even mentioned this, I'm sure many of you would look at the photo and kind of see something along those lines with these two trees embracing with the little tree up in the background. Um, but in reality, these trees probably are to some degree helping each other survive because, you know, it's not a very large area that this wash drains, but you know, during the summer months when you have these crazy monsoon rains, you have the flooding that rages through there, the debris flowing through there. The fact that you have this smaller tree being sheltered by this bigger tree um, and the two of them combined with their sort of combined root system kind of holding the ground together um, probably does actually help them survive in a very harsh environment where you have you know winter snow you have really extreme heat during the summertime the flash flood so I, I think there is some truth to the fact that these trees are surviving kind of because of each other in this scenario now You'll notice that this is a vertical composition, which is something I do not do a heck of a lot. I almost always prefer horizontal, but in this case, yeah, vertical is definitely the better choice. And when I was setting up this photo, I'm pretty sure I was using my normal 300 millimeter lens. And the question was how much foreground to include in the scene. The foreground is the least attractive part of this photo, but it's really important from a storytelling standpoint because it, paints the picture of these trees in a harsh environment with the sort of the, the flood debris, the exposed roots, the rocks, the dirt, the mud. And uh, so in reality, I think I probably could have included just a hair more of it when I was setting up the composition, but I was also trying to seek a balance 
And one of the things I do when I set up a composition is I pay really close attention to the extreme edges of the composition. And that sort of helps me to help get a better balance for the photo. So I think I was kind of moving it up and down, up and down, and kind of settled on the amount of foreground that I selected. But this is a photo that I title Embrace because of sort of the, those two trees there. And it's one I actually have as the background picture on my phone. And it's one I could probably stare at for a very long time. It's one that doesn't get as much attention as probably some of the other photos in my portfolio. But it's one I think does tell a really nice story that you can kind of um, imagine sort of a story as though there are people, but also in reality, those trees probably are helping each other survive in that scenario. Uh, the next photo. So the next photo is one I shot, I believe, back in 2013. And um, there is definitely a bit of a story behind this photo. Um, this was a really weird year for fall color. It was probably the worst year for fall color of all the times I've gone to Zion. And the fall color was almost completely done before I even got to Zion. I was really looking forward to shooting the maples that year, but the maples had already lost their leaves, the oaks had lost their leaves, and the cottonwoods are kind of this weird sort of color where the leaves were thinning out, some of them were green, some of them were yellow. And you'll see that in the trees way off in the background, sort of the weird, uneven fall color. Um, but this was pretty late in the trip. Um, I was pretty miserable, to be honest. Um, first of all, I had this weird leg nerve thing where I could hardly bend my leg. I, I had a hard time tying my shoes and throwing on a heavy pack and hiking and all that just was not something that was enjoyable at all. And to add to that, I had also come down with this really nasty cold. And I mean, I to say that I was miserable was an understatement. And for those of you that are familiar with Zion, you'll recognize this as the Big Bend area. And for those of you that are not familiar with Zion, it might look like this is somewhere off the beaten path. But in reality, I am not far from a shuttle stop in this photo. And I, the trail is just barely like outside the composition. So I just had enough energy to go over to this area and photograph this tree and figured, hey, I'm gonna expose one sheet of film and just kind of see what happens. But in this case, there is this really cool subject matter that I'd found as I was just kind of wandering through Zion over the years. I really like this tree in this foreground, this tree that has since fallen over. This was a cottonwood tree. And now it's nutrients and all that is kind of, it's all breaking down. It's kind of working its way back into the earth. But one thing that really struck me about the scene was the branch in the lower right corner that's sort of cradling the grasses that are growing there. As though, you know, it's kind of like the almost the dying wish of this tree to help sort of, you know, preserve the area around it, protect the area around it. And so in that sense, it's sort of telling the actual natural story of, you know, the tree decaying, sort of giving its nutrients back to the soil. But, you know, it also tells the true story of fall color that year, which was a really mixed color with those trees in the background. And also there's those trees in the foreground, in the midground, they're kind of, um, kind of looking over this tree. So to me, this is another one that kind of builds a little bit of an emotional connection with the photo. Not just because I was absolutely miserable when I shot it, but, um, but again, you look at these trees and they almost kind of look like people. It kind of takes on a little bit of a different meaning. And it, I think it's really a beautiful photo because of sort of the story that it tells and the very sort of accurate nature, the very real nature of a photo like this, where it's not just trying to find the prettiest area and isolating that, but just kind of showing this whole scene and uh, showing sort of the reality of, of nature. So that is one that, uh, that I really like. I like how it sort of tells a story behind it. I should also add that that was a photo that uh, I shot with my wide angle lens. Uh, no filters or anything like that. It was just taken in reflected light in the afternoon as the sun is hitting some cliffs way up kind of over the scene, it kind of reflects this nice warm light into the scene. So it just shows the power of having really nice light with, uh, with a subject that tells a little bit of a story. Uh, the final photo. So the final photo is one I shot back in 2012. And this was the year that I spent some time up in the White Mountains of California. And uh, this is where the bristlecone pines live. This is one of the areas where the bristlecone pines live. And these are trees that can live to be incredibly old. And um, 
So I was trying to find a photo that sort of tells a story of this particular area um, and sort of how these tre trees live so long and how you know um, strong they are, how um, they just can outlast anything around them. And so I was sort of scrambling around, wandering around like I normally do. And I found this area where there was this root ball from a long, long since um, died uh, br bristlecone pine tree. So this tree died a long time ago. And now it's kind of decayed down to the point where there's like this root ball with a little bit of a stump sticking out from it, just sitting kind of on the top of this um, slope with all these white rocks. And what really caught my attention was the fact that there was this rock that the tree had originally grown its roots around, kind of held on to it. But now since that tree is slowly decaying, it's starting to expose that rock and kind of release that rock. And what was really interesting is the fact that it's really the shape of a heart. The opening is the shape of a heart. And then you have this white rock in the middle of it. So it was like this embrace of this tree kind of growing around this rock and then with time sort of starting to decay, kind of to let it go and to sort of beautifully kind of, um, kind of decay with age. But what was really interesting is that I remember, you know, smelling this tree or up close, it smelled like fresh lumber. But to think that that tree could have possibly have been maybe even thousands of years old. And uh, now it's just sort of gracefully kind of decaying back into its surroundings and sort of releasing the rock that it had, you know, embraced for so long. So that's another one where I think if people look at that photo, it does tell a little bit of a story, in this case, kind of a close-up of that. And uh, so I call that one Soul of the Ancients. So these photos, let's talk about what these photos have in common. What they have in common from the most just simplistic standpoint is they're all photos, photos of trees. And I think this is one of the reasons why I'm really attracted to trees and why I really seek out trees in my photos because they have a quality that I think we can relate to, uh, more so than uh, a landscape with just rocks and other stuff. I mean, that's kind of a cold landscape. It can look cool, but the moment you add trees to the scene, it adds that aspect of life, it adds that aspect of survival, and it adds even more of a storytelling ability. So that's why when I went on my spring trip, I was actively looking for trees to photograph. And uh, when I went on the backpacking trip, there were those two trees I found that uh, that really did quite well and I'll be featuring some of those in some videos a little bit later on But I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you around next week <laughs>